All right, so here we have theorem on simple interest. So that's A is equal to the principal plus the principal times the rate times the time. And what we're basically doing is we're saying, okay, well, we have some principal. We're going to add the PRT, which remember that was interest. So we're taking those two, add in, adding them together, and that's going to be our future amount in the uh, um, account or what we would future owe. And so if we look at this, we can pull out a P here. And so P times one plus RT now is going to be our A. So the future value is going to be the principal well, times one plus the rate times the time. So when we know three of the four variables, either A, P, R, A, P, P, R, A, P, whatever, as long as we know three of them, we can find the fourth one using algebra. All right, so this one says, find the total amount due on a loan of $600 at 6% simple interest at the end of four months. All right, so, all right, total amount due. So we were looking for A, and so what is our principal at $600? And we're going to use our 1 plus R, in this case, 0 0.06 times our T. Well, four months, well, that's 4 out of 12, which is 1 third. So that's going to be times 1 third. And so if we go back to our calculator again, here we have 600. And then we're going to take that times one plus our rate, which was 0 0.06, times that one divided by three, and this should give us 612. So that value is our future value. So A is equal to $612. So that's going to be the amount due on the loan at the end of four months at 6% simple interest. What about this one? If you want to earn an annual rate of 10% on your investment, how much to the nearest penny should you pay for a note that will be worth $3,000 in six months? All right, so what do we know? Well, the future value is going to be $3,000. So that's A. So let's kind of write down what we know. Uh, the time is 9 out of 12, or that's going to be 3 fourths. Uh, we have a rate is going to be 0 0.10. And so now we can plug all that in. And what we're looking for is going to be the P. So P is what we're looking for. So if we say 3,000 is equal to P times 1 plus our R, 0 0.1 times. And now we have 3 fourths instead. And we want to solve that. Well, what we're going to have to do to solve for P, we're going to have to divide that by the 1 plus 0 0.1 times 3 fourths. And so we'll divide that by 1 plus 0 0.1 times 3 fourths. And the 1 didn't come out there. All right. So now let's plug that in and see what we get. All right. So we have our 3,000 divided by... 1 plus 0 0.1 times 3 divided by 4. And that gives us $2,790 and 0.697. Now remember, it said round to the nearest penny. So that 7, I'll round that up. And so we'll have 0 0.70 there. So that gives us P is equal to 279 zero point seven zero that's the amount we have to actually put into the account to get the future value so that's the principle that we would have to have now simple interest on short-term notes often has a time period given in days rather than months or years so depending on the specifics of the problem at times the number of days is divided by 360 to convert your number of days to years this is called a banker's year at other times, it's divided by 365 to convert to years, and the choice should always be clear in the problem. So this is a banker year. This is a normal year. So we have to really pay attention to what year they're talking to, to us about for the problem, and then we'll be able to divide by the correct number of days. Now, calculations where the time period is not given in days are not affected, so you won't have to worry about it if it's not in days. All right, so let's stop there, and we'll come back for more.